Let's take a better look at each of our triangles. The equilateral we'll do first. Equilateral triangles have three equal sides. So each of these get, would get one hash mark. You would see it like that. That signifies an equilateral triangle. If we were going to take the uh, perimeter of an equilateral triangle, we certainly could say side A plus B plus C. That's kind of a generic way to form a um, perimeter of a triangle. But since all of these are the same, we would use the same letter for each of these. That also signifies uh, an angle or a side of a figure that is congruent. So we could be more sophisticated with this, the, the perimeter formula and say 3a. So if a was 7, we would have perimeter is equal to 3 times 7. Perimeter is equal to 21 units. The isosceles triangle has two sides that are the same. And obviously that one is different. So a perimeter on this one, you could use your all purpose, A plus B plus C. But B and C are the same amount. They're, the, they're, the, they're congruent. So we could make, give it the same letter, and now our formula would be a plus 2b. Our scalene triangle has three sides that are different. So the perimeter of this would have to be a plus b plus c. Now you're going to find the same when you go for your angles because perimeter is walking along the sides of it. In fact, the names of the sides and the names of the angles can be given at once, kind of like a first name and a middle name perhaps, because in, a, in an equilateral triangle that might, that has to have three sides that are less than 90 degrees, so that would make them all acute. So you could have an equilateral acute triangle, you could call that one, and in this case you could say the same thing, an acute equilateral if you would want to put the angle first. But do you see how these triangles are similar? We've just called them by their angles here and the sides there. But we could put the two together and have like a first and a middle name. Equilateral acute, or you could say acute equilateral triangle. And that would identify the sides and the angles in the same name. Now the only difference that we have here is the perimeter is looking at the sides. When we get to the area of a triangle, we have to look at the shape to see if we have wasted space. This is not a good setup if you're going to uh, plant a garden. This is a much better shape for a garden. You can have rows and rows and rows and plant every row has the same number of plants in it as the middle one as the end. But here with a triangle, we've got some wasted space here. So in our wasted space of a triangle, see that wasted space? This is a two dimensional shape. It's got length and width, or base and height. So we're going to use the fraction 1 half. Then we're going to do the base, where it sits, times the height. Let's say our base is 10. The height of it, we would have to know this way. It's, it's a line that's t taken from the peak, this vertice, and taken straight down to the base. So we would need to know this the length of that, let's call it 4. So in our formula, area is equal to 1 half base times height 
we would say area is equal to 1 half our base, which is 10, times the height, which is 4. Then the, all we have to do is the calculation on it. Area is equal to 5, half of 10 is 5, times 4. Area is equal to 20 units squared. Because what we're doing is we're, we're making rows and rows and rows here. And we're making boxes. So that's why we say squared. Because we're making little squares.